Hey there, I'm Beginner's Bushman. I'm back with Bush Class USA's lesson number 11, Identifying Trees. The objective here was to positively identify five different trees and kind of describe the tree and some of its uses. So I was actually able to find two of them right here in my own yard. Two of them were about 10 miles down the road at a local nature trail, and the last one I actually found in a cemetery. So hopefully you enjoy it, and thanks for watching. First up is the eastern white pine or Pinus strobus. This tree belongs to the conifer family. Uh, it's easily identified by its long needles found in clusters of five. Uh, the eastern white pine has been known to reach over 190 feet, but typically can be found from uh, 80 to 110 feet. Um, when immature, they have smooth gray bark, and that gets rougher and darkens as the tree ages. The pine is most widely used in the construction industry. The uses include, but are not limited to, cabinet making, flooring, veneer, interior trim, and lumber. In fact, your home is probably framed with pine lumber. The needles of the white pine are high in sugars and vitamin C. In fact, I read that eight ounces of needles contain five times the vitamin C as one lemon, so I thought that was pretty impressive. A tea can be made by steeping these needles into some water, which could provide you with some energy if you were feeling a little down and out. Uh, the warm tea could also help warm your core temperature if you found yourself in a cold weather situation. And not to mention with the vitamin C content, that would give you a little bit of an immunity boost. Uh, the cones found on this tree contain nuts. These pine nuts are edible, and they have quite a bit of nutritional value also. But they are pretty small, which means you'd have to gather quite a few of them to make a meal. But in any case, that's always a good thing to keep kind of filed away. Uh, the cones do need to be enclosed. If the cones are open, the nuts are, have already been dispelled from them, so you want to make sure if you're gathering up to eat that the cones are actually still closed. The inner bark is also edible and pretty high in sugars and vitamins and minerals as well. Uh, it's got a lot of vitamin B in it. Uh, it's usually boiled though before you eat it because it's pretty fibrous and too much of it will give you some gastrointestinal distress. Uh, so keep that in mind if you're going to try out the cambium layer. Uh, medicinally, the eastern white pine has quite a few good uses. I mentioned the vitamin content, which could prevent some sickness and illness altogether, but it'll help you out, too, if you've already gotten sick. By brewing a tea from the twigs and some of the cambium layer, you can actually make a expectorant and cough suppressant. So if you have a cold, your chest is full of phlegm, you got a lot of congestion, you can drink that and it'll help clear things up a bit. Uh, a tea from the cambium and needles has also been said to be good for the kidneys and bladder, so it is a diuretic. Uh, the pitch was chewed by natives due to the sugar content. I'm sure it might have had some kind of medicinal value. I'm not sure about that, but uh, the resin also has an antimicrobial property and uh, it was used to uh, cover wounds and uh, to encourage healing. It also was used to draw out boils and abscesses. Uh, the eastern white pine holds its dead branches well. That makes them good fuel even in pretty moist and wet conditions. The heartwood of the dead logs and the stumps can be harvested for fat wood, which could be a lifesaver in, you know, in a cold or wet or damp situation as well. Uh, the pitch and resin are flammable and that can be used as kind of an accelerant, speed things along, you know, again in a moist or damp situation. The pitch and resin also can be made into a fairly strong adhesive, kind of like a, a natural hot glue. There's a lot of different methods for that, a lot of videos. Uh, you can check that out. Uh, the live branches and twigs along with the needles can also be used to pad or insulate your, your bedding or your sleeping area. So, so you can see that eastern white pine is actually useful for quite a few things, so that's why it's one of my favorite trees. Uh, my description of it would probably be a tall, straight, fragrant evergreen with long needles. The young trees are kind of bright and attractive, but they kind of dull out and uh, get wind-blown, spaced out looking as they get older, but nonetheless still a pretty valuable resource when you're out in the wild. Our next tree is the silver maple, or Acer saccharinum. I do apologize if that's not correct. This deciduous is known for its rapid growth rate and prolific seed production. 
Young trees can be identified by their smooth silvery gray bark, which as the tree ages darkens and becomes furrowed and somewhat shaggy looking. It can be distinguished from other maples by the deep notches between the lobes of the leaves, which actually have a silvery white underside, so when it's getting ready to rain and the leaves turn, it kind of gives the tree a little bit different of a look. Um, this tree is often cut with red maple and so the soft maple. Even though that's the case, I found that it's fairly hard wood, but it's brittle and it's pretty easy to work with. They use it in furniture making, cabinetry, paneling, flooring, veneer, making musical instruments, and as well as boxes and crates. The old heartwood actually develops kind of a swirling pattern, and they sell that as bird's eye maple. It's been researched as a possible biofuel due to its rapid growth rate, and its shallow root system actually makes it pretty good for controlling erosion. The silver maple is an important food source for many birds and mammals. Squirrels in particular depend on it in late winter and early spring as their food supply starts to wane. They feed on the buds of this tree, which start to develop in late winter. Medicinally, this tree has been used in various forms to treat coughs, cramps, dysentery, sore eyes, measles, menstrual issues, running sores, and venereal diseases. The sap is low in sugar, but I've read it makes a pretty good light syrup. You can remove the wings also from the seeds and eat those raw or cooked. I've actually heard that they're better raw. The seedlings can be eaten alone or in salads. The Native Americans cooked the inner bark and made it into a powder to thicken soups and stews. And they also wrapped uh, fruits and vegetables in the leaves, so I'm guessing there's some kind of preservative quality in the leaf. You can make a blackish dye by boiling the twigs and bark, and I've also read that boiling the inner bark will yield a light brown dye. This tree provides excellent shade in the summertime, most deciduous trees too, but the rounded top gives you real good shade, so if you're a little overexerted in the summertime, you can sit under this tree for a while and rest. And help you out. Uh, you can usually find firewood under this tree due to the brittle state of the branches. Winds and storms will knock the branches out of the tree a lot of times, so firewood collection is usually pretty easy underneath these trees. I've actually made a few successful bow drill sets out of silver maple. It works fairly well. It's not the easiest, softest wood in the world, but, but it's pretty consistent. I found it works pretty well. Um, I was thinking that this tree would actually be pretty good for an urban survival situation due to the fact that it's planted a lot in town. A lot of people like the look of this tree and the way it grows so fast. You see this a lot grown in cities and towns, so, you know, in some kind of urban situation, you'd, you know, could always look for this tree. My description of the silver maple would be a good climbing tree due to the fact that it has a short, thick trunk and the first branch is usually pretty low on the tree. Uh, it has kind of grayish, almost shaggy bark as the tree gets older, and it usually has a rounded top. The next tree is black walnut or Juglans nigra. Uh, this is a deciduous. This is kind of a small one here, but as it gets large, it grows to be very large. Uh, as it does get larger, it'll develop kind of a darkish gray, blackish, deeply furrowed bark. It's uh, very distinguishable. It's uh, you can usually kind of spot this a mile away. It's a monster tree usually with with a real distinct bark. Traditionally, this tree has been sought after for its hard, straight grain wood for use in furniture making and gun stocks. But lately, it's been kind of reduced to a veneer type wood due to more limited supply. The nuts are used as additives and paints fillers and explosives. They're used in cosmetics and dental cleaners and also in water filtration. <clears throat> the black walnut's also a pretty important food source for small mammals particularly. Uh, squirrels and ground squirrels. You see squirrels fighting over these a lot. Uh, you see the chewed up green holes everywhere, you know, where the squirrel's been tracking them down and, and getting the, the actual walnut out of the hole. Uh, Medicinally, it's been used as a mild laxative. It's been used to treat toothaches, skin diseases, ringworm, tetter, diphtheria. It's a vermifuge, which means it'll dispel parasites from your body. Uh, it's high in manganese, which is really important for nerves and cartilage. So there's a lot of good medical uses. There's a lot more than that. That's just a few. Uh, if you really research this tree, there's tons of medical. It's almost a miracle tree, really. Uh, the nuts are edible. They're high in unsaturated fats and carbs. They're very, very nutritious for a wild edible. Uh, probably one of the most you'll find. It's got omega-3s and omega-6s in there. 
that's used a lot in baking stuff like that you can actually make a pretty good brown dye and natural stain out of the holes you boil those down a couple times and it, and it comes out pretty dark I've tried it a couple times it really works well uh, like I said the woods real tough straight grained so it would make a good tool handle in a pinch you break your handle on your axe or something out in the woods uh, you could do a heck of a lot worse than black walnut for a handle that's for sure uh, parts of the tree can use be used for tanning hives. Uh, I've actually read that the nut shells can be used for a bearing block for a, a bow drill set. I've never tried it, but I have read accounts that it works. Uh, might be something to look into. Uh, the nuts can be ground up and made an abrasive cleaner. It's actually real good for cleaning up metals. They use it a lot in uh, cleaning up air, airplane parts, engine parts, internal engine parts, particularly aluminum. Uh, Parts of the roots can be boiled. They contain uh, juglone and rotenone. I do believe that's how you pronounce them. Uh, and you can actually poison small pools of fish, and it'll still leave it edible to humans. My description of the black walnut would be that uh, when it's mature, it's a very, very large, dominant tree. It's usually right up there amongst the big boys in the canopy of the woods. Uh, you can usually identify it in the late summer by the green holes that are hanging off of the tree or laying on the ground underneath it, contained in the walnut. Uh, it's got a real, real dark, almost black bark, uh, real furrowed, so it's a really easily identified tree. Our fourth tree is the eastern red cedar, or Juniperus virginiana. I do apologize if you can't see that very well. It's starting to get dark here. It's uh, clouded over and started raining a little bit, so the visibility is a little low here with the camera. I do apologize for that. Uh, this is a conifer. It's a member of the juniper family. It can be identified by its short needles. It's a reddish heartwood and very distinct smell. Uh, it has a natural weather resistance that makes it very popular for making outdoor furniture. The aroma wards off moths making it widely used in closets, dresser drawers, chests, armoires, anywhere where you store clothing. Medicinally, I read that the cones were used as a kidney medicine. Uh, in other forms, it was used to treat vomiting, rheumatism, arthritis, backache, coughing and scratchy throat. Uh, it has a sedative effect. Uh, they used it to speed childbirth and uh, it's anti-diarrheal. It's light, durable wood, makes it good for making lances and bows, arrow shafts, things like that. It's regarded as a good bow drill making material. Uh, the bark uh, is really good fire tender, so there's a couple really good fire making qualities in this tree. My description of the eastern red cedar would be a small aromatic evergreen with short needles and often twisted branches. Last, but certainly not least, is Quercus alba, or the white oak. This deciduous is considered by many as the king of the oaks. It can be identified by its leaves with finger-shaped lobes and its light scaly bark. Uh, the root system is actually said to be as large underneath the ground as the tree is up above the ground, so I found that pretty amazing. Uh, some of its uses have included wagon wheels and axles, shipbuilding, barrel making, beams for construction, flooring, railroad ties, furniture, and interior trim. The bark has an astringent quality and is good for controlling inflammation. It's used to treat kidney stones, swollen glands, hemorrhoids and gout, varicose veins, internal bleeding, gingivitis, loose teeth and swollen gums, fevers, coughs, colds, and mucus congestion. And it also can be gargled to relieve sore throat. The acorn is a valuable but inconsistent food source for over 180 birds and mammals including squirrels, ground squirrels, deer, raccoons, crows, ducks, turkeys, and quail. So there's a lot of good eating that can be found around this tree. The acorn is also edible for humans. You can eat them raw, but they can be a little bit bitter. So most people boil or roast them to make them a little bit more palatable before they eat them. Uh, it can also be made into a flour for making breads and things like that. The white oak's wood is very weather resistant, rot resistant, and durable. It's good for making spears, bows, oars, and boats, tool handles. It makes a really good firewood, uh, excellent shade tree, and it's also the only wood that you can make stakes out of that'll kill vampires. So I'm not sure how important that is to know, but I thought I'd throw it in there.
Uh, my description of the white oak is a majestic, sturdy, often almost perfectly round tree. If you see it from a distance, a lot of times you'll notice uh, the tree almost looks perfectly round from a ways away. And it can actually be wider than it is tall. This has been Bush Class USA's lesson number 11, identifying trees. Thanks for watching.